This Sports Blitz podcast is brought to you by LMG. Grow your business through logo design, paper products, and video production. Visit leemarketing.net to learn more. Welcome back to Sports Blitz Live. Luke Robinson with you. This is, segment is brought to you by Russell Medical Center. And joining us now on the Dane Sharp Hotline is Van Plexico, who's written a book about Auburn called Decades of Dominance. Very interesting book. I was able to uh, peruse it earlier today. He sent me over a copy. I really do appreciate that. Van, how are you doing tonight? Hey, Luke. I'm glad to be on, and I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Alabama guy, first of all. I'll go ahead and throw that warning out there to you. <laughs> okay. But – I found the book so interesting. Look, Auburn is nothing. And once you get past, you know, the Alabama-Auburn, we hate each other and all that you do, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> if you can ever get through that as a fan and, and, and uh, muddle your way through it, then what you have to admit as an Alabama fan, Auburn is nothing if not resilient and if not interesting. And, and your book really brings that out. I mean, the, the highs and lows Auburn has been through, and while the book is called Decades of Dominance, uh, you and John Ringer do a great job of talking about both the highs and the lows, and I, I found it fascinating. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I've said before that, that um, Auburn certainly has had the, the ups and the downs, the woulda, coulda, shouldas, and, um, you know, we've had, I think we've had just enough really great years here and there to keep everybody going, and we've had enough sort of bad years to keep everybody humble, so... You know, it's it's a it's an interesting life being an Auburn guy, <laughs> no doubt about it. Well, what was the inspiration for the book? Was it just that that you? I mean, you're. I hate to say it like this. You're too full of Auburn. You just wanted to put something down on paper. I know you're a writer, uh, you know, in other aspects of life as well. I mean, was was this something that you just always wanted to do? Well, it, what started out was that back in early the beginning of the 2010 season, my co-author John Ringer and I we went to Auburn together back in the late 80s under in the Pat Dye period. We started writing a column every week for the War Eagle Reader, and when that season turned out to be so great, we just took our columns and expanded it out a bit and made a book called Season of Our Dreams about the national championship season. And my wife and I even got to go out to the to Arizona to the game and you know, got to write about the whole thing from start to finish. We were just lucky to pick that year to do our to start our column. And so that book did really well. It made the you know, Amazon's best selling sports books list for that year, two thousand eleven. And so John and I started talking about what can we do for an encore. And I said, Well what do we really want to argue? And the the thing that we felt like we needed to argue because you know a book kind of needs a point. The book the point of the first book was here's how the national championship was won week by week. And the point of the new book really was to say, you know, people looked at Auburn in 2010 almost like a fluke. And we wanted to point out that Auburn, I mean, one of the most important statistics that that book argues, Auburn in the last 30 years has a winning record against every other SEC team except Florida, and it's only a couple of games now against Florida. And people don't realize that. People think Auburn's probably six, seven, eight, you know, no, there's, in, in the, since Pat Dye walked onto the Plains in 1980, 81, only Florida has a winning record. Now, the last couple of years, it's gotten a lot closer with some. But, uh, so that was one thing, is we wanted to argue that, and we wanted our children, uh, John and I both have little kids, and we wanted to kind of present like a time capsule for them to see, you know, what Auburn was like, why we love it so much, why we're so excited about it. So that was really the, the main impetus to do it was, just to, uh, to kind of have something that look back at the last 30 years, which is the time that John and I have, you know, really been paying attention. We've been to those games. We've, we've, we attended most of those games. We just obsessed over them, the teams, during those years. And we just wanted to kind of put something together that really presented just how great of a time that really was, which I think is very underrated by a lot of other people. And you have some great chapters in the book. I mean, I could, I could break all these down. I mean, but I'd like for people to go buy the book and, and judge for themselves and find out for themselves. I mean, the rise and fall of Tuberville, very interesting to me. I mean, I don't know that anybody's ever been so much of a hero and so much of a goat at the very same time. But the chapter that really spoke to me, because I'm a, I'm a what-if guy. Uh, you, mm-hmm. you have a little bit of history in comic books. You know, there was a comic book called What If. I loved all that. Sure. The top ten yeah. Auburn games that never happened. Um, for yeah. instance, 
the one that you want to I, I want to talk about a few of these, but one that the, the first one you talk about is you, Auburn could have played Oklahoma in the 86 87 Orange Bowl, but Pat Dye had already done something. You want to explain that? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Pat Dye was a man of his word, and so uh, the, the at the end of the 86 season, Auburn was uh, at that point nine and two, and because the two losses were SEC, they couldn't, they weren't going to win the SEC and go to the Sugar Bowl. But they were still a nine and two team with a very exciting offense with uh, Brent Fullwood and, and, and the running back and Jeff Berger at quarterback. And so the Orange Bowl asked him, but but Die had already promised basically what's the Capital One Bowl today, I believe that we would go down there. And so he had to tell the Orange Bowl we couldn't come. And it's just funny because we've never played in the Orange Bowl. That was at least in the modern era. And so that was the one time we, we would have been in the Orange Bowl. And Die just said, no, I promised uh, Orlando, so we're not coming. Yeah, that's really interesting because I can tell you right now, I don't care what kind of person you, you are. Today, if the Orange Bowl came calling over the Citrus Bowl or whatever you want to call them by whatever sponsorship name they have, every school in the country would jump over any other school to do that just for the money. Yeah, no, I think so. Um, but yeah, another one – go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, there's a couple of other, I think, really interesting. You might want to the, like uh, we mentioned, the one that, that probably seems the least consequential, but I argue is actually, and John argues is the most consequential, was the 2004 Bowling Green game. Now you may say, well, Auburn didn't play Bowling Green in 2004 exactly, and you say, well, what difference would it have made if they had? Well, this was Urban Meyer's Bowling Green, which was a Division One team, and um, it got bought off the schedule right before the season started. And all, uh, Tuberville had to run, run around and find somebody to add to the schedule at the last second, and he had to add the Citadel. Well, Auburn got a lot of grief for playing the Citadel and ended up in third place and didn't get to go to the national championship game. Instead, you know, USC and Oklahoma. Here's the kicker. Guess who bought Bowling Green off Auburn's schedule? Oklahoma. Yeah, I read that. I, uh, that really is fascinating. Of course, with the Bowling Green being coached by – Urban Meyer, who later goes to Florida, and who, who's never able to beat Auburn. I mean, the whole thing is really interesting and wild just the way it turned out. But another one to me that's very interesting because, um, again, I, I find some of the 1980s games a lot of fun. The 1988 season where Auburn, if they don't lose the earthquake game to uh. LSU, they probably play Notre Dame. Now, I will, take, I will say this. I don't think you're right about this. You mentioned in the, in the book – you said Auburn probably would have won that game. That Notre Dame team was pretty stout. <laughs> well, the thing is, Auburn played, I think, some you know some really tough teams that year, and Notre Dame ended up playing a very mediocre West Virginia for the national championship. I mean, I think a one-loss Auburn would have been a better challenge for Notre Dame than a, than West Virginia anyway. Agreed. Certainly, if, if Auburn hadn't lost that, given up that last play to Tommy Hodson in the – in the earthquake game in Baton Rouge, yeah, Auburn would have been host to Notre Dame in the Sugar Bowl for the national championship, and that was a great, great Auburn team, that 88 team. Yeah, and I agree with you. And look, that West Virginia team, they can talk about Major Harris and whatever else they want to talk about. That that West Virginia team would have been, would have lost to Auburn just as badly as they lost to Notre Dame. I don't think there's any doubt yeah. about it. You also have an interesting chapter called The Success Quotient, and I'd like for you to explain that and, and the mathematics behind it. Yeah, that was just a fun thing. As, as we were winding up the book, I kept asking John, what else can we add that people would find interesting if they really want to get into stuff? So we added a chapter on the running back statistics that people really like. We added a chapter I had done on the history of the stadium, the Jordan-Hare Stadium. And then I said, why don't we look at the 30 seasons that we're covering? Because this book covers 1981 through 2012. So why don't we look at those seasons and say, what did we expect going in, and how did it turn out? And we gave certain points for everything we, that the team accomplished. So, like, did they go to a bowl game to get a point? Did they win a bowl game? You know, did they go to the SEC championship game? And so they got bonus points. And what we kind of discovered is about what you'd expect, which is that the, the, the 2004 and 2010 teams were just real surprises. And I think... I think what that really reveals, because it because there it wasn't just that they were successful, is that they were that much more successful than people thought going into that season. And I think what it really reveals, ninety three as well, what it reveals about Auburn is that Auburn tends to do really well in years when they when people don't see it coming. 
right? If it's a year where Auburn's predicted to do well, we tend to kind of go eight and four. Agreed. If it's a year where everybody's like, oh, Auburn's going to be mediocre this year, those are the big years, 93, 04, 2010. And so uh, that chapter just kind of uses some, yeah, you know, some mathematics to kind of make that point, and it, it really does bear it out. That's been a rule of thumb for me my whole life. Whenever Auburn is a big favorite, um, I go back to 2003, and I think you bring this up. Uh, 2003, yeah. they open up with Southern Cal. Everybody thinks they're going to walk all over them. And Southern Cal buries them, and and you can you can see. I mean, whenever Auburn's a favorite, they're they're going to fall. But whenever they're an underdog, and you sell them short, and that's why I call them maybe the most resilient team in college football history. I mean, every time you think Auburn's down for the count is when they do something good. But that's why I can't get a, a hold on what I think about Auburn this year. I mean, I can't uh, put my finger around it. I mean, there, there's a lot of excitement there, so that makes me think that Auburn's. Uh, you know, going to be looked at as more of a favorite than people think. But at the same time, I think the talent's a little bit down. So I, I don't know. I don't have a feel for this year. What's your thoughts on 2013? Yeah, and we actually have a chapter at the end where we look at 2013 and beyond and kind of assess what we think. John and I were big boosters for Malzahn. We really wanted him to be the choice. We were both very excited when he did get hired. Because, you know, our argument was this. We said – what Chiswick tried to do last year was be Bama light. We don't need to be Bama light. We need to be a whole different, uh, you know, variety. And so what what Gus offers is a totally different set of ingredients than what Alabama's doing. Alabama's doing what they do. They do it better than anybody. God bless. But Auburn does something different, and it's a, it gives you a little variety, and it gives them something different to kind of prepare for. So we think that uh, John and I both, I think, agree that Auburn's going to have a pretty good year. We Right now, we're looking at between, you know, if we go six and six, that's a hundred percent improvement over last year. That's <laughs> double. So there's really nowhere to go but up. But uh, I'm I'm really starting to feel like maybe seven and five, eight and four, if we if we if some things bounce the right way, because um, I think that this person, the, the it's obvious. I mean, this stuff that everybody's talked about. It, the, the personnel fits the system better. Gus recruited most of these players. Um, they just seem a lot more comfortable. I have a lot more confidence in these coaches, assistant coaches, than I did in the previous group. And so, um, you know, the, the hard thing is that the, the, the schedule is always just so tough. It's the SEC. Check this out. I just discovered this this afternoon and was saying this on Twitter. LSU last season, okay, LSU finished 10-3, and three, and yet five other SEC teams finished with a better record than that. That is ridiculous. I, I mean, the- That's ridiculous. The, the league is, is at an all-time high. There, there's no uh, ifs, ands, or buts about it. And people who want to put the league down, quite frankly, just aren't appreciating the moment. The SEC is uh, at an all-time high, and it, it's a lot of fun. We're definitely in the golden age of SEC football. And uh, books like yours really help me appreciate it a lot more, Van. I, I appreciate your hard work on this. Even as an Alabama fan, I find it fascinating. I think it's a lot of fun, and uh, I think people should definitely go out there and pick it up. Why don't you tell people where they can get your book? I really appreciate the, your kind words very much about that, Luke. It's, um, it's on Amazon now. That seems to be the place people find it the easiest. <laughs> It'll be available in bookstores. If it's not, if, if, I don't know if bookstores in Alabama are carrying it yet. I've got to imagine they'll want to. But if, uh, if they don't have it yet, they should be able to order it now or soon. But Amazon.com is probably just the best place to go because you can get it within like the next two or three days if you order it from there. Well, Van, thanks so much for joining us. And listen, we want to have you on uh, during the year this year and have your thoughts on what's going on with Auburn football, okay? That would be great. I'd love to do it.